So we are going to go over manual therapy for the golfer in terms of maintenance and preventative care. We're looking at stopping injuries from occurring, but we're also considering improving performance and everything we can possibly do. We're gonna work through different structures and we're also gonna consider the activation pattern of primary muscles in a golf swing. We're gonna divide this up into two videos because when patients come to see us and we wanna spend enough time on the person to actually work on these structures, we need almost a double appointment or about a half an hour appointment to work through the entire body. So the first video is gonna be on the upper extremity, which structures are involved, and you're gonna notice that it's quite asymmetrical because golf is an asymmetrical sport. This is for a right-sided golfer, and we're gonna start with the upper trapezius. Vicki, you okay to start working through your body here? Yes. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go on the right-hand side, and we're gonna look at the right upper trapezius. Okay, so I'm just gonna take you through here. You doing okay there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Bit tight there, right? Yes. Okay, so take it to the side. Ooh, that is very tight. And to the side. And you notice I'm starting to put a little rotation in a lot of these motions or circumduction because we're actually able to access a lot of the fascial restrictions a little bit easier. And then I'm going to move on down a little bit towards more mid trap stuff. That's tighter, oh. isn't it? Take it down. Good. Now take your arm here, take it across and down. I take your head down. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's really tight. Good. And down. Oh. Feel like quite a bit? Yes. Okay. So if we go through the whole golf swing, we'll notice that the upper trap for a right-handed golfer is only activated once. If we look at the middle trapezius, we're going to notice that it's actually activated twice on both sides. So now we're going to move over to the left middle trap. Okay. I'll actually just take it down here a little bit first. Don't even worry about the arm too much to begin with. You okay? Yeah. Good. Right down. So if we go through all the different five phases of a golf swing, we'll see that certain structures are activated only in certain phases. But now we're considering the entire golf swing. Okay, now I take this down here, across and down, grab the arm. Doing okay? Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. a bit tight. <laughs> take it down, perfect. Good. Excellent. Okay, <laughs> that's a bit tight. Oh, man. All right, now I'm gonna have you actually lie on your back, please. So we're going to get on to the pectoralis major muscle. Are you okay with me working on Yeah. Area? And we're going to have to work on both sides, so bilateral. Good. Take this down and back. Good. Excellent. Now during the golf swing, the pecs are activated two times on both sides. Doing okay there? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm going to get a little bit of circumduction in there. So that increases the intensity considerably. Mm -hmm, big time. <laughs> yeah. Now, the other muscle that I need to work on is actually in the front of the scapula, the subscapularis. And just like the pecs, it's actually activated two times during the whole golf swing. So while I'm here, I'm actually just going to move my way right into the subscapularis. You okay? Mm hmm. Good, keep breathing. And again. And now I'm gonna put a little bit of circumduction in there. You okay? That's a good spot. <laughs> That's definitely tight. Good. Okay, so let's move over to the left side. Again, we're gonna get on the pectoralis major. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. It's tighter than the other side though. Yes, it is. Quite a bit. Good. And once again, the pectoralis major gets activated twice during the golf swing. Get a little bit of circumduction in there. Good. Excellent. And now 
Again, let's move on to the subscapularis. Doing okay? Okay, let's just bring that back a little bit here. Good. Excellent. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you lie on your with the right side up, please. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing. We're getting on the serratus anterior, and if we look at this muscle, it's actually, we're looking at primary activation. In other words, it's not as if the left serratus isn't involved to a certain degree in certain actions, but not from a perspective of primary activation. And during a full golf swing, the right serratus anterior is actually activated three separate times. Are you okay? Yeah. Now I'm gonna have you go face down, please. Just gonna move the strap out of the way a little bit here. So, scapula, infraspinatus, arm up, take it back, going forward, and reach over. Now, during a full golf swing, the left infraspinatus is activated twice. As you're seeing, there's quite an asymmetry here. We got onto the serratus anterior, we only treated one side. And for some natus here, we're only going to treat one side. You okay? Yep. The asymmetry of golf can actually lead to a lot of injuries. So it's very important in terms of strength training, flexibility, mobility, balance, proprioception, working on the entire body. But in terms of getting in and actually finding restrictions and areas that may be inhibiting performance or creating injuries, knowing which structures are primary in the swing can really help us focus on what to treat. You okay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to have you have a seat and just face away here, please, for me. Okay, I'm going to get you to take your arm cross and grab it and just pull it in like a stretch there, okay? Okay, just one sec here. So I'm just gonna get on the wrong words here. Doing okay there? Yeah. And back. Okay. And again, there we go. Yeah. Feel that one a bit more, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah very much so. And back. Again, perfect. Back and again, just kind of working my way up through and considering both the rhomboid major minor, feeling where the restriction is in Mickey's case here, it's right here. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Okay, so after we go through and we consider all the soft tissue restrictions, freeing up this, I would also look at the cervical spine, look at the joints, look at the mobility, go through and figure out if there's a restriction in range of motion. It could be lateral or rotate, it could be rotation, flexion, extension, also thoracic spine, lumbar spine, looking at the SI joints, considering all aspects of the kinetic chain, which is both soft tissue and joints. This can make a huge difference in your golf performance. Of course, we're going to, in the next video, take a look at the lower extremity and consider which structures are involved.